Prior to lunch, we finished up a model with respect to open population. That's this um, uh, contagion version eight. And um, I'd like to now show you a feature of any logic that's quite new, very useful at times, particularly when it comes to making sure you understand the execution of a model properly and uh, to provide insight into events leading up to interesting emergence or behavior of concern. You're not sure if it's uh, problematic. Um, we've seen thus far in some of my examples a, um, uh, a use of um, uh, tracing uh, mechanisms that we, um, that we deliberately program. So you may recall this little mechanism example, which we use to illustrate the semantics of transitions in any logic. Um, we had uh, explicitly entered actions to take place at certain key points. When individuals entered or leave states, when individuals um, uh, transition, uh, ex you know, uh, exercise a transition, so transition fires, etc. cetera. Um, that's one very effective way for tracing when and if one reaches a certain point in the model or, or goes along a certain pathway as illustrated by, by transitions. Uh, but I want to show you a way that's both more powerful Perhaps not quite as, it's not as general, but it's more powerful and it's more easily enabled and disabled. And therefore doesn't clutter up the model as much. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, um, to illustrate this, I will focus on this model that we've built, but I'm going to save it because I'm going to do something which will modify it slightly. I am going to save it away as version 9, okay? But you can operate off of version 8, OK? OK, we only have two TAs in the room. I'm getting a little bit worried. Um, we need a TA. Um, OK, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go to database here. And uh, within the database, I'm going to uh, Jeff, would you mind um, because there's people outside the room who care about me, would you mind just uh, answering text to me, inquiring about my condition? Thanks. I, I, I want to make sure that we stay stay keeping people abreast. Right. OK. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like you to go to the database associated with the model. And you'll notice that if you go to this database, there's uh, over on the right-hand side, um, in, in addition to a variety of things, like you can import tables externally or um, uh, delete a database, et cetera, there's a thing that says log model execution. Do you see that? You can, if you check that, you'll notice there's a little thing next to it. It says log will appear in the project view after you run and close the model. Okay? This is going to actually take care of logging behavior within the model as it runs. Behavior of a wide variety of sorts by default, but you're going to be able to enable and disable certain types of behavior. Okay. Um, so to illustrate this, having gone to the database, check this log model execution. I want to come back up, and I want to run the baseline run, OK? Just not privileging any one, any one scenario. I'm going to say run. We run it. We, of course, have this option. This is the experiment open screen, and we could say run. And it will be running. We don't have to run it full length, though you're welcome to do so. I'm going to stop it, terminate the execution with this red, big red, the, the button there, and I'm going to close it. Okay? Now, 
by appearance, nothing really obvious has happened, with one exception. One exception, ladies and gentlemen. This little database now has a little triangular thing next to it where it didn't before. And what that triangular thing indicates is what? Is anyone? There's, yeah, there's something underneath it. And so if you go to that, you'll see there's a log. If you expand that, you'll see, oh, wait a minute. There's a lot of different things here. And uh, we can go and, and start to explore. For example, we can go look at, at, at the agents log. And what you'll find is that agents are listed by their birth date. Now, this is not because we, we actually kept track of all their birth dates. They're, it actually is automatically recorded, because you notice it indicates their death date. So far, no one's died in this model because we had disabled death. Okay? Let's look some more, though. Let's go look at events. These are events that are firing. Here's a yearly reporting. Here's initial infection event. In short, it's giving you a transcript of everything that's occurring within the model. Let's go look at uh, aspects of agent state chart states log. Here we go. Person entered into this state. They entered this susceptible uh, feature of this state at this time, and they exited at that time. Do you see that? Hmm? Or let's check out the messages. Messages sent from one agent to another at a certain date and time. And this counts the number of cumulative messages sent thus far. By the way, you'll notice that, that this is reporting the number of the agent in the population. This is 153. I think 154 is actually the, the, actually the ID of that agent. The latter is the more permanent one. Uh, the, the, the former can change as agents get deleted, if I'm not mistaken, so, um, of, of what these two denote. OK. Um, we don't have any agent movement here, but we do have agent parameters that were specified. So this is specifying what the parameter was for a given agent. Remember, we had birth time. I want to distinguish that from when we saw agents where this is the birth date. That was, it actually tells you when that agent was created, when they were destroyed. This agent parameters is our parameters. This is birth time. We chose the name for that. And this is the actual value of it. There's many other uh, features here. The histograms currently are empty. We'll get to them. Uh, and similarly, there's, there's no statistics that are, are yet placed in the model for us to log, but there could be if, if, if there were interest here. Um, uh, and in terms of statistics, you'll notice this tells you the amount of time that they have spent in, in uh, different, um, uh, different states. So I think this is the cumulative states. This is the number of time that they were Mm, mm, mm. Okay, the population zero. I'm trying to understand why it was in susceptible state uh, twice. Uh, trying to understand that, um, uh, but it would spend this total seconds and this this mean seconds. So it gives you a sense of where agents are spending their time. Okay. Um, in short, this provides you a wealth of possible information about what's going on in the model for a given run of the model. That can be quite useful for understanding what's going wrong, for understanding why you see behavior that's being produced correctly. It can give you an understanding of where agents are spending their time, help ensure that indeed agents are sending messages to one another, that agents are entering certain states of the state chart. When we start to do other things like create histograms and so on, it will give a sense of, of um, uh, those histograms over time. Very useful. I'll, I'll highlight just one or two additional things here. Number one, you notice that each of these logs is optional. Not only can you disable all of them by saying log or do not log, you can actually say, look, I do not need 
an agent's log, for example. Or you could create an editable, editable view where you actually go through and, and um, can, can export it or change it, I believe. Okay. Um, uh, so we could, uh, we could uh, place this into a context that we could export it externally. And if I'm not mistaken, I may be, I may be wrong here, but, um, but I even think from this, by selecting it, what I did is I clicked in the log, I expanded it, I copied it, and I then went here and into a, uh, a calc, and I can paste it in, and I can export it to uh, a spreadsheet, for example. This happens to be LibreOffice, an op um, open source spreadsheet, but, but you could do it for Microsoft Excel. Okay. So you can export these things. Yeah. You, it's a good question. Uh, so in general, any logic databases, yes, you can define custom columns and you could insert it into them. What, what won't change is it won't know how to insert, um, let's put it this way, it knows how to gather certain types of data right away. If you insert a new column, you could fill it in, but it's not going to auto-populate it because it won't know what it means. You know, like. What are the semantics of it? What, what are you trying to get? You know, it could be a very custom thing. Like you want to know the number of times agents have received a message and stayed susceptible, or number of times they've received the message and proceeded to an infectious state. Um, it was a transmissible thing, or something like that. It's a custom statistic you want to capture. And, and you can do that, but you will have to put in the logic to do so. Is that OK? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was a little bit about uh, about logging within any logic models. This is a very powerful feature, and I believe that it was inspired by some work that came out of our boot camp and out of our lab, where we did a first thing that did this. Any logic said, "Wow, that's really really useful. Let's build it into the product," and they built it in. It was it was done by a master's student as part of her thesis. And um, they rightly saw this could be generalized. It could be more powerful yet if it's built in. And thus, you know, they decided to build it into the product, which is a worthy addition because it really can help us understand what's going on. I will note that a coming frontier um, is to visualize all this information properly. So you can turn it from a whole list of numbers into timelines and, you know, little illustrations, what's happening at what timeline, um, so that you can explore the model dynamics more fully than would be immediately possible with, with just looking at these columns. You'd have to delve through it a lot, whereas we could visualize this more effectively. But that is probably a job for the Oculus. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So um, there's some there's some raw underlying data that um, that is stored here, and I believe these are summaries. For example, this um, agents. So if I were to go up here. To this data here, movement stats log or state chart stats log. I believe this is a summary of more fine-grained data, which is, is then summarized up. So if you want to understand your model, debug your model, raise confidence your model's working correctly, um, uh, understand the set of interactions better in, in your model for certain features, um, this is an excellent tool. And it's a tool that is enableable at the click of a button. Okay? We know how to do that. 
if there were interest, I could teach how to have an external debugger connect to any logic, set breakpoints, intercept the code. The AnyLogic Professional Edition includes a debugger. In fact, I think University Researcher includes a debugger. There's a University Researcher or uh, educational version. It has a debugger, so you can set breakpoints in your in your code, for whom that's a meaning, for those here who, for whom that's a meaningful concept. Basically, you can tell it, hey, when you reach this certain point, this transition, for example, I could set a breakpoint so when it comes here, it'll stop. And I can explore what's going on at that time. But even for other versions, like PLE, that we're using here, you can take an external debugger and connect it to a running any logic version model in a way that you can intercept it at that place and inspect what's going on as well. And it's very powerful. It's, it's, it requires a little bit more fortitude um, technically to, to undertake because it's, it's a bit less immediately obvious how it works, but, uh, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's about time I updated that video online. Mm. Any other questions about this, this logging? If you've got a model, this could be really helpful. Okay. It does slow it down. It, it, it's gonna slow it down. And therefore, I wouldn't, I would, I would generally not run it for every run. That's, that's why you might log it or not. You might turn it off most of the time, but if you wanna debug it, you wanna understand it, you wanna visualize it, whatever, you could turn this on. Um, now, lacking additional time and demand, I'm not going, to, not going to, to cover it here, but suffice it to say that it's very fruitful for some models to create databases that, that are then modified as the model run. You keep custom information. And we have models which we could show which would illustrate that sort of functioning. Um, uh, but basically, instead of it, creating all this data in your, in your code, it can create it, and then you can export it at other times with, with exporting and with exporting tables to itself, okay? Um, and you could specify where to, to export it, for example, um, and, uh, you know, say results or what have you, and you could say what to export, um, and maybe I want to export the parameters, the state chart states, the statistics, um, uh, et cetera, and the agents log, and I could say export, boom. And it will export it to a file, which is located here uh, uh, on, okay, uh, Uh, why did I not see that? Uh, okay, I, I just exported it, I thought, to, to my uh, main folder. Let me, let me try that again. Oh, I need to, there, I need to do it. Here it is. So I need, actually need to press the button. So here I told it, look, export, I'm sorry, I, I was not showing that clearly. Export settings, I told it what to export. The actual export is when I press this. I could also tell it to export automatically when the model finishes running. And here it is exporting these, this various information. Here on parameters, here on state chart statistics, here on the state chart states over time, and here on the agents that it created. Okay? Um, so that's a little bit about AnyLogic's logging. Very powerful. Quite general, though not quite as general as printing things out. Enableable and disableable at the click of a button. In short, flexible. Okay? Okay. Um, great. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that's one thing I wanted to teach here. I want to teach one other thing. One other thing, ladies and gentlemen. This, this lesson will combine two elements. 
but I'm going to put it on another video.